I'll get straight to the point. Wordle has 2,315 words on its original answer list. I want to know which one of those words creates the hardest puzzle. But here's the thing. Wordle is fundamentally a luck-based game. No matter how hard an answer is in theory, it can be made easy if the player gets a lucky guess on the first word. Knowing this, how do we define what makes a puzzle hard? On the surface, it seems like an impossible question to answer, but I'm going to do my best to answer it regardless. One way of judging difficulty is to look at optimal Wordle play. If a player, or more realistically a computer, was to make the best possible guess at every point, some words would still take more guesses than others. Thus, we could claim that words which take more guesses are harder than those that take less. But that's not the full story, is it? I mean, humans don't exactly play this game optimally. We are imperfect creatures with imperfect knowledge about Wordle. As such, we also play Wordle very differently, meaning that different words will be harder. Ideally, I would round up a few hundred human players, make them play every possible game of Wordle, and average out the guest counts to see which words tend to take the most. Unfortunately, convincing people to play a couple thousand quick games of Wordle proved to be rather difficult, so I had to come up with an alternate plan. Instead, I developed two additional metrics to measure difficulty that relate more to how humans play the game. The first is word obscurity. When humans evaluate potential answers, some words spring to mind much easier than others. For example, let's say you get these four greens after guessing the word drone. What's your next guess? If you said prone, then I don't blame you. That would also be my next guess. However, Crone is also on the answer list, and is just as likely to be the answer as prone is. So why do people guess prone before crone? It's because prone is a much more common word. Thus, we can say that crone is a harder word than prone. In a more generalized sense, we can say more obscure words are harder than less obscure ones. The other metric is my attempt to simulate how humans play the game. Many players have a set of opening words that they use before they attempt to actually guess the answer. Personally, I'm partial to Flame, Shunt, Brick, Podgy. Since these are static opening patterns, this means we can analyze which words they are good at solving and which words they are bad at solving. For example, my set would find the word frame very easy. I mean, all the letters are green, you just have to type them in, you don't even need the last word. But if I got this pattern here, guessing the next answer isn't so easy. It could be Water, or Extra, or Terra, or even Eater. The space of possible answers isn't narrowed down as much as I would like. Thus, we can say that these four words are harder than frame, given my starting set. Now, what if we had a bunch of these sets, and performed the same analysis on all of them? Then, we could look through and see which words tend to be in larger groups, meaning that they would be harder across more sets, and thus harder words overall. So, those are my three metrics. For each metric, I'm going to assign a score to each word in the answer list, based on how easy or hard it is. I'll be going over the hardest words for each metric, but at the end I'm going to be combining all three scores in order to determine which word is the hardest answer in Wordle. Let's get into it. Let's start with discussing the perfect Wordle strategy. We're going to define the perfect strategy as the strategy that gets you the average lowest number of guesses across all possible answers. Now, a perfect strategy has been known and documented online for a good while. In fact, this website, created by Jonathan Olson, lets you explore the decision tree of a perfect strategy. You can see what the next best guess is on each possible outcome by just clicking the various word outputs on screen. At this point, it's tempting to just take this decision tree, find out how many guesses it takes to get each word, sort them from highest to lowest, and call it a day. But there's a catch. You may have noticed I've been saying a perfect strategy and not the perfect strategy. It turns out there's actually quite a few of these decision trees that all tie for least average guesses. All of them start with the word Soleil, but as you get deeper into the trees, you begin to see a lot more possible differences. Here's an example. Let's say we got back all greys after guessing Soleil. According to our decision tree, the next best guess here is Coord. So let's say we guess that and then get back this pattern here. Now, our perfect computer knows that there are two possible answers left here couch, and cough. So the next best play is to guess one of them, and if it's wrong, guess the other one. But how does it decide which one to guess? Well, there's not really a good way of doing that. It just has to pick one by whatever arbitrary metric. In this tree, 
couch is guessed first, which makes me believe the tiebreaker is just alphabetical order. This poses a problem for my experiment. There are several cases just like this one, where the next best play is to just guess one of the remaining answers to narrow the field. But if this tree is just guessing the first guess alphabetically in these cases, that's a significant bias being introduced into my scoring. So simply looking at the guess count of one tree isn't going to cut it. So how do I solve this? Well, in a perfect world, I would generate every possible perfect tree, and then average out the guess count of every answer between all of them. But, I'll be honest, with my current skills and hardware, trying to compute this would probably take me months. So I did the next best thing. I manually went through the endings of all the branches, looking for cases where the computer is just picking between two words. I then added up the total guesses in that group for all the words, and then divided that number by the number of words in the group, which in this case is two. Doing this evenly distributes the guess count across both words, removing the alphabetical bias. That means we are going to assign words half guesses. Yes, I am aware that a half guess is not something you can do in a regular game of Wordle. It's just a notation to represent the multiple optimal possibilities. You can stop writing that comment now. Thanks. Next, I looked at groups of three. For most of these groups, I simply repeated the process from before, dividing the guesses by three instead of two. However, I quickly realized that this wasn't good enough for some groups of three. You see, there were a few groups of three words where an optimal player would only guess two of the words. Here's an example. This path leads you to the group containing blade, blaze, and place. Guessing either blade or blaze is optimal here, as if you're wrong, the B would tell you what the answer is. A gray B would indicate place, while a green B indicates the answer is whichever one of blade or blaze you didn't already guess. However, if you were to guess place and it was wrong, the resulting output would be the same for both blade and blaze, meaning that you risk taking six guesses to find the answer. This is worse because the other two words allow you to always get the answer in five guesses. For these cases, I only distribute the guesses among the words that are optimal, and leave the other words unchanged. So both Blade and Blaze get a guess count of 4.5, while Place remains at 5, because optimal play would always get Place in 5 guesses. This isn't a perfect solution, but it should be enough to remove the majority of the alphabetical bias from my final results. So, let's look at which words scored the highest and lowest. For the highest scores, we end up with 7 words that still take 5 guesses, even after accounting for all the bias. There's not really any clear similarities between any of them, which is interesting. Some of them contain uncommon letters, while others don't. Some of them contain duplicate letters, while others don't. Regardless, these will be the highest scoring words under this metric. For the lowest words, we see a lot more similarity. Since most of them are guaranteed solves after Soleil, these words tend to share a lot of letters with Soleil. There's also a couple answers here that just happen to be guessed early on by the optimal strategy, since they reveal a lot of information. Words like North and Drone are examples of these. Let's move on to the next metric, Word Obscurity. This one is pretty simple to understand. We're going to order all the words on the answer list from least obscure to most obscure, and then assign higher scores to more obscure words. The first order of business is to find frequency data for every word on Wordle's answer list. Surprisingly, this turned out to be pretty easy. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this excellent video by the channel 3Blue1Brown. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. In this video, they evaluate the likelihood of each word on the guest list being present on the answer list by looking at the usage frequency of each word. 3Blue1Brown actually made the data used in this video publicly available, so special thanks to them for making this segment of the video possible. Anyways, we're going to be using this data in a slightly different way. We already know what's on the answer list, so we're just going to remove all the other words and just focus on potential answers. After ordering these answers from least obscure to most obscure, the next question is, how do I assign values to each answer? Much like the 3 blue 1 brown video, we're going to use a sigmoid function. The sigmoid function is shaped like this, and has a range between 0 and 1. We're going to take our ordered list of words and spread it across the x-axis, and then assign each word the value of the sigmoid function above it. But there's still some decisions to make. For example, where do we place the center of our word list? If we just center it at the y-axis, 
then the 1154th word will have about half the value of the least common word. Is that really what we want? I mean, the answer list already contains mostly common words. The 1154th word is grind, which is definitely a word most English speakers will be innately familiar with. In order to reflect this, we want to move all of our words to the left. This will give most of our words pretty low scores, which is what we want since most of the words on the answer list are common words. The standout rare words will receive much higher relative scores, more accurately reflecting their relative obscurity. After playing with these metrics for a while, I got a distribution of scores that I was happy with. The first 950 words received a score less than 0.01. The first 1,506 words received a score less than 0.1. And only the hardest 299 words had a score higher than 0.5. Remember, all of these scores are out of a maximum of 1. So, what is the most obscure answer anyways? Well, according to this list, it's plier. This is a pretty interesting pick, since you're probably much more familiar with pliers than a single plier. Here's the 10 most obscure words. These certainly aren't the 10 words I would personally say I recognize the least, but I wouldn't say any of them are common either. My opinion of what the most obscure words are is completely subjective anyways. It's entirely possible that some word that I think is uncommon is actually common, and I've just never happened to hear it. Overall, I think this list does a good enough job of distinguishing the common words from the more obscure ones. Finally, we come to the last metric, human strategy. Or at least, human strategy that I can simulate and measure easily. I know that a lot of players play with one guess at a time as opposed to using a set starting combination, but that's just not feasible for me to simulate. If anything, that kind of strategy is more accurately captured in the first metric, albeit without accounting for human error. But regardless, I do think that these starting sets are a relatively common way to play Wordle, and that measuring them should give good insight into which words are harder for humans. So the next question is, where do I find a bunch of different Wordle starting sets? Well, this question turned out to be much easier than expected to answer. You see, I've been doing these daily Wordle puzzles on my channel for the past month or so, where I provide a picture of a Wordle game board and my viewers try to guess what the word is. In response to this, several people have suggested their preferred starting set in the comments. And I've been recording these suggestions to potentially use for puzzles in the future. What this means is that I already have a decently sized database of starting sets used by real humans. So while I can't use all of these sets for puzzles, if you commented your set, there's a very good chance I noted it down, and it's being used in this very video. Of course, a few sets were clearly not meant to actually solve Wordle, and were designed specifically for puzzles. But even after trimming those, I was left with a solid sample of 111 unique sets. So how do we score the words using these sets? For each answer, we're going to look at the board it generates. Then, we're going to see how many other answers also generate that board. Finally, we're going to take all of those answers and assign them a score equal to the chance of a player getting the answer wrong on their next guess. So for this example here, all of these words would be assigned a score of 3 quarters or 0.75. We're going to do this for every answer across all 111 word sets, and then add up all of the scores to get a final total score for each word. I like this scoring system for two reasons. One, the harder a word is on a word set, the higher it scores, which is exactly what we want. Two, the amount that each word set can contribute to the total for a word is capped. That is to say, no word can ever receive a score higher than one for a given starting set. This prevents a single bad word set from overpowering the data. For example, let's say our metric was to instead just add the number of answers in each group to the total. So in our previous example, we would just add the number 4 to each word's score. Well, if there happened to be a poor set in our data that had an answer group of 100 words, then 100 would be added to the score of a bunch of words. Considering that most answer groups are adding 2 or 3 to the score, this one set would completely overpower the data and create bias. Using a fraction that will always be less than 1 prevents this from being a problem. Now for the results. By this metric, the hardest word ends up being state, which scores about 74.7 out of 111. State is closely followed by booby, which is a kind of seabird, and for the purposes of this video, only a kind of seabird. 
On the other hand, there were a handful of words that never shared a board with any other words across all 111 sets in my sample. In a way, we can say that these 10 words are the most unique answers in Wordle. Alright, moment of truth. We finally got our three scores from our three metrics, and all that's left is to combine them and see which word scores the highest. There's just one problem though. One of these metrics ranges from 0 to 1, one of them ranges from 2 to 5, and the final one ranges from 0 to about 75. If I was to just lazily add these scores together, the final metric would completely overpower the other two, making them near worthless. How do we solve this? We need to scale all of our metrics so that they range from the same minimum value to the same maximum value, while still keeping the relative distances between each score the same. For simplicity's sake, I chose 0 as the minimum and 1 as the maximum. The math behind scaling our metrics is actually also pretty simple. We just find the difference between our highest and lowest scores, and then for each score, subtract the minimum score and then divide that by the difference. Because we are doing the exact same adjustment to every score, the scores will still maintain the same relative distances between each other. That is to say, if one score was twice as much as another before, it will still be twice as much after this adjustment. The only difference is we've made sure they all fit between 0 and 1, with the lowest score being 0 and the highest score being 1. Finally, we can just add these three scaled scores together, and we're done. We have a sorted list of Wordle scores from hardest to easiest that equally weighs all three of the metrics we described before. So, it's time for the big reveal. What do you think the hardest word is? Do you think it was one of the words that scored big in one specific category? Or do you think it's a word that just did pretty good in all of the categories? Maybe it's a word that did amazing in two categories, but only okay in the other one. Well, we're about to find out. Drumroll, please. And the hardest answer in Wordle is... Boozy. With a score of about 2.68 out of 3, Boozy is the hardest answer in Wordle. Let's break down how it did in each of the categories. In terms of optimal play, Boozy got a score of 4.5, which was the second highest possible score. For obscurity, Boozy was the 80th most obscure word. Remember, there are over 2,000 words on the answer list, so 80th is pretty high. Finally, Boozy scored about 5 points from the top of the starting set metric, with a score of around 69.19. This makes sense when you recall that Booby did so well on that metric, since Boozy appears in the same answer group as Booby most of the time. Overall, Boozy scores extremely well on all three of my metrics, making it a solid choice for the hardest answer in Wordle. If you're curious, here are the top 10 answers, along with their scores. There's some surprisingly large gaps between scores here, which is surprising to me considering how clumped together a lot of the scores in the individual metrics were. And of course, here are the 10 easiest words. Nothing really surprising here, these are all common words with common letters. I guess waste having a W is somewhat unusual, since W is a relatively rare letter, but other than that, this is about what I'd expect. Before I go, there's one more thing I want to touch on. It turns out there actually is one place to get broad information on how humans are doing at Wordle. Twitter. It's become common practice for players to tweet their results after the daily Wordle, so Twitter has actually gone ahead and analyzed this data to see which answer took the most average guesses. Turns out, it's Swill. If you were playing Wordle on this day, you're probably not shocked. People were much more likely to guess Skill, Spill, or Still before trying Swill, leading to a higher average guess count. So how does Swill rank on my list? Turns out, it's 62nd. Considering the majority of the words above it have never been an official daily Wordle, I'm pretty happy with that. And that's the video. This was by far the most effort I've ever put into a video for this channel, so if you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Not only does this help the channel grow, but it shows me that you want more of this type of content. Also, if you have suggestions or ideas on how you would answer this question, I encourage you to leave them in the comments below. For those interested, I've put the full lists for each of the three metrics, as well as the final list in the description, so feel free to check those out. Finally, I managed to sneak in one Wordle puzzle into this video. If you can find it and solve it, drop the answer in the comments. Anyways, that's all from me. Have a good one.